Hi, I'm Barney. He told you, don't get near the glass. Thank you for your kind review, Starsky, but I think you'll find the hardware clone and software emulation sound nothing like my vintage unit that I have meticulously cared for for the past 40 years. It is in pristine condition, museum quality, some may say, just like the people in my basement. Here I'm going to put two Poly 6s up against one another. They're both in reasonably good condition. They were both serviced a year or so ago, so they should sound similar, or will they sound exactly the same, or will the differences be the same differences that you get between a hardware clone and a vintage synth, or a software emulation and a vintage synth? We'll find out, and to save us all from the asylum, I've put this drastically down from the few hours worth of testing, just to put the most interesting bits in, really, because listening to the same two synths playing the same sound over and over, doing the same filter sweeps over and over, does lead you to some rather weird places. So before that starts, here's a little track I made a year or so ago on the Poly 6, and it features the Breakfast Club dancing in full on 80s footloose style, so what's not to like about that? Starting off with just a simple sawtooth as is traditional. And I found that the bottom one is a little bit duller, not quite as bright. There's not much in it, but it did seem to get a bit brighter at one point and now it's got a bit duller again. <laughs> But looking at those uh, oscilloscopes as well, you know, we're looking at the same synth, aren't we? Let's put it onto the pulse. And this time the bottom one seems a bit brighter. But we are getting a slightly different wave shape there, aren't we? It's a bit more sort of pronounced as a square on the bottom one. We've got those little edges to it. Much smoother on the top one. And we can also see those intermediate harmonics are lowered on the top one. So again, very minor differences, but if you were thinking, does this soft synth sound like a poly six, would you agree? Goes through zero. Same here. Bit of PWM. I'm happy again that they sound the same, don't they? No worries there. Considering they've been there on different journeys for the past 40 years, that's incredibly close. I'm gonna move over to the effects now, not to the filter, because the filter's a bit more complex. Um, and obviously, when I say that, I mean there's more differences. Uh, so let's go to the chorus effect. And this is the one that I found was a bit different on between them, at least. So if we go to the bottom one. It 
feels a lot richer on this bottom one to me. Just has a nicer tone to it. Sounds more chorusy maybe. And go to the phase. Super, super similar, as is the ensemble effect. Minor differences. Okay, over to the filter. So watch your ears. Lovely bassy rumble. You can hear it step in there. And that's the resolution of the knob, I think, because don't forget, it does have presets. So just an 80s thing. Let's hold it there. Let's try the top one. Again, we've got the big bassy rumble, rattling the windows. Got that step in. And off over 20 kilohertz, bring it back. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> and that's interesting in that they're both obviously they're out of tune because they've got the keyboard tracking off. One of the things I've noticed when I've been playing these is that the top one seems to sound richer. Or is it just because it gets a bit louder every now and then? Hard to tell. Well, that's definitely softer, this bottom one, isn't it? <laughs> and it's really hard to do keyboard tracking on these because, uh, as I say, the, um, the oscillators or the different voices go out of tune. But what is quite interesting, I thought, if I do something like this, bring the envelope into it. We can hear one of the voices being completely out. But now they're not quite so out, so it's almost like the envelope intensity amount is different for each of the voices rather than the filter itself. Because now they're very similar. But come back here. <laughs> so you can see that it depends on the settings, it depends on the sound. But if you were trying to match, I don't know, a, a preset with your vintage, with one that you hear on software, it's going to be utterly different if your vintage is anything like any of these. Over to the envelopes now, and this is sort of what gives a vintage synth its sort of rich character, I think, because the envelopes interact differently with the filters and the amplifier, differently for each of the voices, which gives it sort of six individual tones almost. <laughs> You can hear the cutoff on the filter is different for each of the voices. You can see there on the frequency analysis, we've got one, two, three, four peaks, is that? There you go, there's the four peaks on the way down. Let's just put the attack on zero and spread them to the left and right ears. We're getting different behaviour, aren't we? So this um, envelope intensity amount, 
uh, made me think about things like a little sort of baseline where you've got a nice snappy envelope in there. So let's do something like this. And this is one that really interested me actually because um, they sound like different synths almost. The top one is really nice. Got a really nice attack to it, a nice lot of punch. But the bottom one, it's gone sort of really quiet. It just sounds lame. So after a fair few minutes of messing about, I've got them much, much closer. And that's a lot harder than it is for me normally with a simple sound like this, a usable simple sound that you would have in a track. A lot harder to do that with these two identical synths than it normally is with a soft synth emulation or a clone. Still not identical. But we're there, aren't we now? And the big difference here is that the envelope amount is much greater on the bottom one than it is on the top one. I say much, so that's come down to about 3.5, 3.3, something like that, and the top one's on five. But when this one is on full, so you're messing around with the cutoff, you're messing around with the resonance. It's actually the modulation amount. And I think if you're sitting at home and you're watching a video and you're trying to copy what, what I'm doing or copy what someone else is doing, you think it doesn't sound like my synth. Unless you're going from first principles and starting from scratch and got the two of them in front of you, it's really difficult to understand if it really does have that character. And when I say it's got the same character and it's slightly different, I understand that, well, from the amount of these sorts of things I've done, you know, you can tell if you're going to get there eventually or if it's along the same lines or if it's just completely different. But I didn't think this was completely different until I managed to get it sounding the same. Bank A program one, they've both got the initial preset in. Which are pretty close. Then we go to two. <laughs> now that's I programmed that in myself from the from the spec sheet, but so I don't know what's going on with this one. I've not played it for long enough, but let's try and just do a nice pad, shall we? I'll use my um, minor sevenths, just to annoy people that don't like minor sevenths. Talking to you, Todd Urban. <laughs> okay, so let's program in a tone that you might use, just a really simple uh, PWM pad. Add an octave down, sub. Okay, let's add some ensemble. Drop that filter.
So I have to say, I'm, I'm not amazed by, but I'm pleasantly surprised by how close these are, considering they've had different lives, uh, the 40 odd years old, and you know. <laughs> They sound like one another, don't they? Well, the software surprised me. I seem to remember it not being as good as that. I've not done a thorough test of it. Don't want to get locked up in one of these cells. But I thought the whole thing was quite interesting, really. We've got two synths there, led different lives, 40 years between them, hundreds of parts degrade at a different rate, and yet they still retain the same character. Not identical, but uh, as we expected, slightly different. But are those differences the same as the differences that you get with hardware versus software, with clones versus originals? I don't know. Anyway, that was a bit of fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me over on Patreon, and all the rest of it. And I will see you next time. <laughs>